So here's a bit of an introduction to performance planning. And I want you to think about everything that we're going to look at in this presentation through this lens. We need the airplanes that air carriers operate to be loaded and operated in such a way that there is still a margin of safety even if an engine fails. So from that, we can take a look at our overall picture of a departure of an aircraft. There are a lot of places on here where there could be a problem with an engine, probably, or some mechanical problem where the airplane might need to come back to land or operate on one engine or any of these types of things. What we want to look at when we are considering the performance for an air carrier aircraft is we need to make sure that we meet all these requirements. The requirements are actually listed out here, each segment being shown up here. There are four different segments of climb and then the whole ground roll part. And all of these things we are looking at when we are determining on the air carrier, on the aircraft that we're flying, can it meet these performance requirements? For example, the ground roll. We aren't really going to talk about distances, not very much for an air carrier aircraft. You won't see pilots or dispatchers calculating the distance required for an airplane to take off in, but what we do have the ability to look at um, is can the airplane for a given day, a given temperature, given engines that it has mounted on the airplane, bolted to the airplane, can it take off, can it accelerate to a certain speed, have an engine failure, and then can it abort the speed, abort the takeoff, and get stopped in what's remaining of the runway. If an airplane can do that, then it's safe. And what we have to look at is that we do not load any airplane heavier than what that's going to work at a certain airport. So naturally, if we've got a shorter runway, and it's so short that it actually is going to be a problem for the airplane if it were loaded at the whole maximum takeoff weight, then we may have to not put as much fuel or not as much people or bags on that airplane so that it can start from stopped, accelerate up to a decision speed, make a decision, and if it stays on the ground, abort that takeoff and still remain stopped on what's remaining of the runway. And so you can extend this a step farther if we look at the climb segments. So um, for this different segments of climb, we basically are going to cover this in the next few slides, but we can't load an airplane so heavy that it unfortunately can't make this climb gradient and ends up hitting some obstacle out here. We don't want it to hit any obstacles out here if it has an engine failure at somewhere along this path. We can't have it hitting obstacles because obviously we lose our safety if we hit obstacles with the airplane. We're probably going to have damage or an airplane crash happen. So in order to achieve this, depending on the airplane, depending on the day, depending on the temperature, depending on the wind, we can't load the airplane so heavy that it's not going to be able to maintain these, basically these gates, these requirements that are going to be shown on the next few slides. So rather than focusing on um, specific distances for takeoff, we're really going to be looking heavily at what's the airplane's weight at which it can comply with these requirements. How airlines do this, uh, we're going to see in this presentation, but just really want you to focus on that we need to have the right weights that can allow us to make these performance decisions happen and maintain our level of safety.